Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports present the best in college basketball, the Atlantic Coast Conference. Welcome to the 19.9 podcast, the best and only retro college basketball podcast. Welcome to the listeners who followed Charlie Ward from the football field to the hardwood and those who still admire Sam Cassell's dancing skills after a big shot. I'm going to kick it to Josh here in a minute, but I want to introduce a guest for today's episode, a four-year member of the Seminole basketball program, Scott Shepard, was part of the 1993 Elite a eight run. Scott's a third generation Indiana All Star who sco- scored 1,777 career points at Carmel High School. His dad, Billy, and Uncle Dave were Mr. Basketball in 1968, 1970, just Hoosier legend. Scott was a Street and Smith basketball, high school basketball top 25 member in 1992. He played 88 games during his four year Florida State career, averaged 10 points per game in the ACC play during his senior season. Teammates included Sam Cassell, Bob Sura, Charlie Ward, and Doug Edwards, all first-round NBA draft pick. He now lives in Laguna Beach, California with, with his wife and seven-year-old son, Hudson. Scott, welcome to the, the show today. Thanks, Aaron and Josh. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Hey, I have a question already. How come you don't introduce me like that? <laughs> That's a fair question. Well, see, I had Scott write his own bio, so he did a, he did a better job. If you write uh, me a good bio, I'll no, read I'm it. No, I'm just going to use that, funny. like when he's not on <laughs> here. Hard, like, those are hard to do, man. Yeah, that bio, do. Your, your bio is going to become my new bio on this uh, <laughs> every time you're not on here. Oh, my gosh. All right, Josh, start start us off here. Flor- Florida State, how did you uh, – Start start with these teams, or what were you what were you thinking in uh, bringing bringing these back? Yeah, so I remember Florida State just uh, growing up in the '90s, and uh, we've had a lot of fun conversation on social media today with a lot of their fans, and, and throughout the week, the the build up and stuff. And I think I posed the question, uh, or not posed the question, but it, it always amazed me how much love Bobby Sura got from like '90s kids. And, and I yeah. was trying to explain it. So uh, EJ down here is much younger than we are. <laughs> and so I like, I think it was middle of the week. I'm like, listen, dude, you have to understand how much we all love Bobby, sir. I was like, and I can't explain it to you. We just love him and you need to love him too. And, and so he has this like soft spot in everybody's uh, uh, hearts that grew up as a nineties college basketball fan. Um, and that's where kind of our, our love for Florida state started. And then obviously you get Charlie Ward and Sam Cassell and, uh, some of those other guys and Pat Kennedy's teams, and and they were always kind of around um, in those ACC uh, seasons. And those those years were loaded in the ACC. Um, and so yeah, and then you know you throw in the the Seminoles um, and the spear and and some of the uniforms and the gold and the garnet and all that stuff, and then you just get hyped about it. So that's uh, that's where we were at. So Scott, l- looping you in here, how did you, uh, an Indiana kid, we're Indiana legend, how did you end up at Florida State? I want to start there because we gotta, we gotta figure out how you ended up there. To I, I could, see, Josh and I were hypothesizing uh, that's before. A great, before that's a great question. <laughs> I think it was my freshman or sophomore year. I was in uh, my coach's office for high school basketball, and he's like, "Hey, Scott," he's like, "I got this assistant coach, Coach Z, on the line from Florida State." you want to talk to him like gosh man that that's a long way from home but uh i'd be open to having a conversation with him and that's kind of how it all started i mean i i took visits to uh to north carolina notre dame wake forest and uh in florida state and just felt like i fed in best at uh at florida state had a great experience on my visit met a lot of really good good people and um felt like you know the acc was the place for me and florida state was the best fit Love it. That's a cool time to be a part of the ACC too. And man, you you landed on some awesome Florida State teams. Uh, you were kind enough too to send us. Uh, well, I mean, I love I love the drop. It brought it brought back so many memories, yes. so many great memories of uh, being down in Tallahassee. I mean, that football there is an autographed football by by Charlie Ward. Yes. Um, so Charlie was you know a teammate for for two years, and um, you know just got to know Charlie really well. But you know playing in the ACC back then. 
it was special. We only had eight teams, so everybody played each other home and home. And uh, you know where you stood, you know, at the end of uh, the ACC season. So uh, a lot of great memories, four years in Chapel Hill, four years at uh, Cameron Indoor. So great memories. <laughs> That's one of the things that um, I miss about the the ACC is now it feels like a its own, like, I mean, there's World. there's like 35 teams. Like, it, you know what I mean? And, and there's just so many teams. I almost lose track of who's in the ACC still and, and all the shuffling and stuff. And I think what you hit on um, is what made college basketball really special because those those teams saw each other, they knew each other, and then when you got into um, Greensboro for the ACC tournament, then like you were playing everybody for the third time, and that's where you felt found out like who yep. the best coaches were and the the adjustments that needed to be made because everybody knew everybody at that point. But it well, made sadly, it a lot of fun to watch. Sadly, they found out more about us than we, we found out about them because <laughs> I was 0-4 I was in my <laughs> ACC tournament career. There you go. <laughs> well, hey, but before we get to the game, so we picked a uh, NCAA tournament team where you guys beat Western Kentucky, but you were kind enough to send us a game where uh, you shot all right. Uh, so I got a couple audio clips that hopefully will bring back some memories for, for you Then we can talk a little bit about that, about that game before talking about Western Kentucky. Here we go. Greer will go out of the ball game. Scott Shepard will come in. Shepard had started two straight games and then didn't play at all against Wake Forest. He said he was confused by that, but here he is early in this game. Scott Shepard for three. When he feels that he can score two, he had 49 in one high school game. To Shepard. Nice jump stop. Boy, that was a good fast break. At full speed, Shepard's able to pull up and stop knocking in the basket. Shepard, you mentioned, didn't play at all in the last game. He's got nine points already. He's a nice player. He's four for four. Here he is again beyond the arc. Yes. He's now five for five. He's the only Florida State player to score a field goal in this game. Twelve points for Shepard. Talking to him before the game, he says, you know, my biggest concern, I'm not getting enough playing time to get my shot grooved. <laughs> it's grooved today. Here's Bobby Sura. Kicks it out of Shepard. What a game Shepard having. That was a great screen by Andre Reed. And an excellent look by Bob Sir. Shepard now 6 for 6, 15 points. His dad was Mr. Basketball in Indiana. His uncle was Mr. Basketball in Indiana. And he was one heck of a high school player himself. That was a fun first half to watch. So you got you were absolutely on fire in that game. So man, <laughs> I'll tell we you were what. playing at, at Maryland. I think Maryland was ranked fourth in the country. Joe Smith. Keith Booth, Yessa Cavichus, X Re Hip. They had a heck of a team. And Sura was ill that day. That was actually the game that, that Sura scored his 2000 uh, career point. So um, I got entered into the game kind of a minute in because Lamar Greer was throwing the ball all over the place and <laughs> couldn't break their press. And I had to come out and start the second half, but I couldn't breathe at halftime. I mean, you heard the announcer <laughs> saying that, you know, I didn't play for, you know, the previous three games leading up to that Maryland game. And I gave it everything I had in that first half. But, you know, you talk about being in the zone. People talk about being in the zone. I can't remember anything other than hearing the ball bounce and the ball go through the hoop. It was just one of those days where everything was lining up well. I'll tell, you, fun memory. I'll tell you what, the two things that I that I that stood out to me while I was watching that first half is one, I loved on the fast break, you take a dribble in, bank shot uh, uh, from mid range uh, and and knock it down. A lost art, old school. A lost art. It looked beautiful. I'm like, <laughs> I miss, I miss this. And, and then, a true, a true Indiana true kid Indiana out kid there playing for sure. And then you did look absolutely. Good. I was watching that. I saw Sarah, Sarah miss me a couple times too, so I got to give him a little crap for that. <laughs> um, you got to feed the hot hand when somebody's hot. That's I mean, right. Yeah, you. I, that was that was a fun. I day. will say you passed up another, in another old school moment. You pass up a three after you've hit like four in a row to pass it into one of the big guys, and yeah, I'm like, that would not days. have happened. Your coach might have pulled you for not shooting that three. Now, he you got to got to throw. I loved check. Andre Reed. I don't know what I was thinking though. He he had hands like feet, but um, <laughs> he was under the basket wide open, so I thought I'd try to feed him. <laughs> Well, I, I love it. And you mentioned that uh, Sura, Sura uh, got his 2,000th point in, in that game. So I got a little bit of audio, and then we can talk a little bit uh, about him as well. Here we go. Booth fires from beyond the arc. Sura with a rebound. And Bobby Sura got up for that rebound like he had springs in his shoes. Didn't show any signs of weakness there. Great penetration and the power move. 
Good strong move to the basket by Sura. Two-point game. And with this bucket, he gets his 2,000th career point. Only the 28th player in this conference to go over 2,000. He's special. So just curious uh, thoughts about playing with Sura, because you got to play with him for for several years. What was he like as a, a player on the court, or what, what stood out the most uh, about yeah. playing with him? Bobby, Bobby could go. I mean, I remember showing up for, uh, you know, kind of first day of open gym when I got down on campus in Tallahassee. And what a lot of people don't realize is that the college court's 10 feet longer than the, the high school court. So when you get to college, you know, you've got an extra 10 feet to work with. But I, I just remember, you know, how quick and smooth Sura was, obviously his athleticism, but he was super strong too. He didn't have like the physical presence and strength, but when it came to getting to the bucket or holding off a man defensively. Sura just had a, a ton of strength and athleticism and special talent. He was, he was a pleasure to play with. That's for sure. And is, you know, still a good friend to this day. Why do you think, um, why do you think his legacy has kind of lived on, uh, amongst us eighties and nineties kids that, that grew up like, like what, what is the, the, the draw? I like, I mentioned it earlier. I was trying to explain it to our younger employee yeah. down here, but I didn't have the like words to explain it, but I just, I, I pulled up Instagram and I just scrolled through the comments and I'm like, every one of these comments is love for Bobby Sura. Like this is, this is all, the only way I can explain it to you. <laughs> I, I think it was that you never knew exactly what you were going to get from Bob. Like he played with a ton of effort and a ton of energy, but I remember talking to some guys in the league when we were, you know, playing in the ACC and they said they'd be in their locker room getting taped up, getting ready to play. And they'd tune into our games and they wondered if we had alcohol in our Gatorade <laughs> coolers because they never knew what what was going to come out of Bob on the court. That, that's so incredible. they swore there was something going on in, in Tallahassee. But I, I think he brought a little bit of pizzazz. He brought energy. Um, he was a, a fun dunker. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. he, he brought a lot of his ass to, to getting to the rim and finishing and he would, he would take any shot in every shot. And uh, I think that's why everybody really enjoyed watching Bobby play. Yeah. Part of the reason we did the, the 94, 95, uh, gold shorts was because of that Nike era too. So that was like right when Nike in the mid nineties yeah. started bringing out, uh, player jerseys in the shorts and stuff like that. So a lot of our. <laughs> Our customers today were commenting on, I, I had these growing up, um, and, and so we played on that too. And, and I think that some of the love for some of those athletes that were featured on those jerseys was that tie back to people's childhood uh, and, and stuff too. And I still see those Bob Sura gold jerseys on eBay for like $350, you know, from from back in the day. So I think there's a, definitely a the nostalgic The golds were the play. best. We, we loved we loved wearing the golds. I mean, I remember when the Fab Five broke out the the yellow, the black Nikes and the black socks, yeah. and then we had to get them right, the yellow, <laughs> yeah. the yellow unis. But exactly. um, we rocked those uh, for the first time, I think, in a in an ACC game, and we were the beneficiaries of getting everything that we wanted from Nike because they were hot on the heels for for Charlie Ward yep. Yep. coming out of school. So I remember showing up in the locker room every day and charlie would have like 10 pairs of sneakers in his locker <laughs> and you know i'd have one or two pairs. did mine. you wear the I same did you a, wear the same size handful, as him? but charlie right. never wore the same pair of shoes twice right That's like funny. i'd see him walking on campus and he had a new pair of nikes on every time but uh yeah that was a fun era the gold i saw you know a post on on twitter today um the guy who kind of brought us all down to tallahassee coach z shout out to him phenomenal recruiter but uh, Burt Reynolds actually designed those those gold jerseys, so um, those yeah. were our favorites there to play you. in. Yeah, Tons that's funny. Fun. Some, that's awesome. Somebody did tweet that to me, and I was I like, "Wow, that's a, that's that. amazing! I didn't know that." <laughs> uh, speaking, yeah. just switching from Bobby Sur for a moment, um, and, and and riding on with uh, Charlie Ward, um, as you guys were playing together, obviously Heisman Trophy winner. Um, did you get the sense or did you guys know ahead of time that he was really leaning more towards the NBA than, than the NFL, like as he was playing with you guys, or was that something that came, came about later? You know, with Charlie, we, we never really knew for sure. I mean, it, it was always a struggle for Charlie to get into basketball shape coming right out of football. Um, so, you know, it took him a little bit, you know, to get going in, in, uh, you know, team play as it relates to basketball, but, you know, Charlie, um, you know, never really talked much about anything. I mean, he, he was a quiet guy and, and remains a quiet guy to 
to this day, just a humble leader, a uh, quiet leader, but he didn't talk much about it, uh, you know, to be honest with you. I mean, a lot of what he did just kind of spoke for itself on the court and on the field. And uh, there weren't really too many people that were, you know, in his quote unquote network. And uh, he remained to him, to himself most of the time, but was still a phenomenal teammate, a phenomenal leader. But I don't think any of us knew exactly, you know, what decision he was going to make. Interesting. It, w- it was interesting doing a little research that he was president of the student body too. So shout out to him just being, talk about a multifaceted person. <laughs> like, wow. I always researching what you guys I thought you doing. had to speak to be, you know, <laughs> yeah. he, he didn't say he was a man of few words. That's amazing. <laughs> Well, let's switch. Yeah, let's yeah. switch to uh, Charlie's a great guy. Uh, uh, the the uh, Western Kentucky game. I got a little bit of uh, kind of highlight audio highlight package here, so we'll listen to this and talk a little bit about uh, about this game, this tournament game, run to the Elite Eight cool. this year. Zora with an alley oop to Rodney Dobar. Giselle beating Sora. and. Bob Sura, who had the first basket of the game for the Seminoles, gets his second. Bell has it blocked by Rodney Dobard, and an easy two for Sura at the other end, and he makes it spectacular. Charlie Ward will go to the line. Here is Ward, who is only one for four from the line. Cool customer, Charlie Ward, gives Florida State a four-point lead. I play Weston backwards, all of them backwards. Let them have the two-point basket. Just no three-point basket. You got a three-point spread. Play everybody backwards. Here goes back to Horn. Up, he stepped over the line. And here's a three attempt at the buzzer. Oh! Oh! <laughs> well, it sounds like they wanted you guys to lose oh, there. Kidding. <laughs> Florida State survived a big scare against Western Kentucky. Florida State will advance to the Southeast Regional. Man, that is that is college basketball, though, right there. You guys sweating it out at the free throw line, missing free throws. They need to get you in there to shoot some free throws. What are your uh, memories from that that game or that run? That was an incredible run. I mean, the one thing that really stands out, we, we drew Evansville the first round, so I got to play against, uh, you know, a home <laughs> state team down in Orlando. But I remember going to the Sweet 16 and checking into the Embassy Suites in Charlotte, and uh, they had like a barbershop quartet greeting <laughs> us in the lobby. And it was like, you know, all this garnet and gold, balloons everywhere. I'm like, this is this is something else. Um, ton of fun, great experience. I remember that being a nail biter against Western Kentucky, right? So getting to getting through them in the Sweet 16, getting to the, the Elite Eight to play Kentucky in the next round. What I remember most about the Western Kentucky game, I think Darren Horn, um, he was on fire. He uh, he was he was lighting it up from the field and went on to uh, you know be a coach I think and um, mm-hmm. you know a commentator at some point in, in his career. But I just remember that feeling, knowing that we were one game away from the Final Four mm-hmm. and having a chance to go down to New Orleans and and play for it all. That was uh, an incredible experience. That that one game being one big ass game against <laughs> <laughs> a big ass college basketball blue blood in in Kentucky. Yeah. Um, yeah. How good were they? Really good. Really good. <laughs> I mean, Mashburn, Travis Ford. You know, the guy that really lit us up that game was uh, Jared Prickett. Yeah. He had a bunch of boards and some buckets. And, you know, we were kind of out of it at the end of the first half. I mean, they they ran us up and down the court. And it was their day. Um, you know, they played incredibly well. And, um, yeah, we just we ran into a buzzsaw with – Kentucky and um you know unfortunately I, I liked our chances if we got to the final sure. four but um Kentucky had something else to say for yeah that that, that 92 93 Kentucky team gets lost in their history I feel like mm. um just because they've had so many national championships and so many teams that have gone on and, and reached the pinnacle but that team was absolutely loaded and it was you know it was an upgrade of the team yeah I remember I was the last I was the last kid out of the locker room after that game. And I remember, I don't know which of Patino's kids it was, but it was he and I just uh, hanging out in the Florida state locker room, just talking hoops. And um, it was, it was a neat, a neat memory for me. Um, You know, he was just trying to, to take it all in and kind of see what the other side of things look like. But um, that was a special moment, just kind of hanging out with him probably for, you know, 15 or 20 minutes while everyone else had left, just talking about life and basketball and, 
he was just a kid at the time. So um, yeah, that's, that's really something cool. that uh, that I'll always cherish. That's really cool. I love the balance of the, this team too. That that goes up against Western Kentucky because you guys had a little bit of everything with you know with Ward, you had youth, you, you know you guys coming in, the younger guys, you had Cassell there, a couple of big guys too that were just just tough, tough, smart players. Uh, who was it, Edwards? Edwards. Yeah, and uh, who's the other big guy on this team? Yeah, help me out, Scott. Doug Edwards was a monster. Dobard, Rodney Dobard. Dobard. That's Dobard. who it was. That's Lefty. who Sir. Yeah, throws the alley oop to. Yeah, yeah, Rodney was incredible. Yeah, yeah, Rodney was incredible. I mean, you could just throw that ball up anywhere, and he'd go get it and find a way to put in the hoop. He was an incredible shot blocker. I think he still might have the all-time shot blocking record. It, at Florida State, but Doug Edwards was probably, I mean, as good as all of those other guys were, Doug probably had the most talent of all yeah. of them. Yeah, he was, and, he, I uh, think he uh, averaged he a double-double that year, double, double The shortest year, NBA too. career, but he was, he was unbelievable. I mean, you could put him at the point, you could put him in the center to, to break the press. Um, he could shoot, he could rebound, he knew how to defend. He was, he was a special player. Yeah, as, as I'm doing all the research for the schools and, and what we're going to do, um, and as I'm researching Florida State, Doug Edwards continues to pop up on my screen. Interesting. Uh, yeah, legend, man. Yeah, I, I mean, I loved how he played. Yeah. Again, like the balance of this team, just a fun old-school team to watch play. Everybody knew, knew how to play basketball, and you guys played well together. It was really fun to watch. Okay, this is a little segment Yeah, called- Doug, Doug had his fun with me at times. He. Uh... <laughs> all right. I remember being in a, a walkthrough before we were playing Virginia and I was on the scout team and I was just walking the baseline on the scout team. I was running offense and Doug just wanted to make sure I knew he was there. So he gave me a little, you know, forearm shiver across the chest. And that's just kind of the, the team that we had. We had a bunch of seasoned vets that knew how to play and some younger guys that were trying to make their mark. But uh, Doug was one of those guys that always made sure that he put people in the right places. So, um, Doug was, Doug you was need a those cats. Though. Little, I don't know about a little forearm shiver yeah. from him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Six, eight. Yeah, exactly. Okay. This, this segment's called can't let it go. So this is us usually something from the game that you, that you saw that you want to bring back up. Like in the past, we've talked about like uh char- charges, people taking charges that it kind of drives you nuts. If there's like an athletic play that it takes away. So mine for now though, I want to bring up Leonard Hamilton and I'm kind of curious where you guys yeah. are. Cause I don't understand why he doesn't get more cred. I, I got in a little bit of an argument. I was like, you know what? I, I I was down on Archie at this point till we won. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We, 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 Here we won, so I'm back in. You yeah. know, Here like, comes. like any don't good, open like this can of thing. worms, Meyer. But anyways, don't I just want to talk him. about Leonard Hamilton. I know I'm, I'm not going to take him, but I wanted <laughs> to talk about though why he doesn't get more cred because I think that he is just a great coach. They're having a great year. They they had an opportunity last year maybe to to repeat some of the stuff consistent. that you guys did. So consistent. Uh, just just curious why why doesn't he get more credit? What what's what what's missing? Oh, what do you guys it's think? A great question. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's maybe that he's down there in, you know, in Tallahassee, Florida. Yep. I mean, just not getting the the notoriety that some of these other, you know, programs are, are getting. Um, I mean, he's he's won everywhere he's been people that are close to him. He's probably the most networked person in college basketball as well. I remember uh meeting with him down in Indianapolis when Florida State came in to play Butler and I was at practice and he was literally walking around the court with like three phones. <laughs> practice is going on. He's talking to ex-players. He's talking to agents. I mean, this guy does it all. And um, so I, I don't know why he doesn't get, you know, the notoriety on the college level that um, that he deserves, but he's put together a string of, of incredible seasons. And the thing that I'm most proud of being an alum of, of Florida State is that, you know, he's turning these kids into men. And You know, it's about going to class. It's about graduating. It's all of these things, you know, off the court that's putting them in a better position to to succeed in life after basketball that's making a lasting impact. And, you know, somebody that that came from a program that, you know, I'm very proud of to see him kind of carry that forward and develop these young men, whether they go on to be professional athletes or do something else, you know, with their career. Um, You know, he's not playing kids because they're the best players are the most talented he's rewarding people that put in the effort both in the classroom and on the courts so um he's just a a solid human he's a great ambassador for ambassador for florida state uh, athletics and um i think he's starting to get more and more noticed that's for sure yeah Uh, you keep winning 
they have no choice but go. to uh, to recognize you. There you go. I was gonna say I think sometimes it takes one final four, right? That yeah. one that one run to get you over the hump and then shed some light on it and everybody's like, Oh, holy shit, yeah. this guy's awesome. Like he's been <laughs> awesome for a long time. For a long time. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's amazing though. I was watching a Florida State. I game. mean, look at these guys that he gets to buy into the system, right? Yeah. I mean, that's guys are playing a ton of minutes there, right? A bunch of guys. So I mean, you got Scotty Barnes, who's not even starting, right? Who's right. going to be a first-round draft pick. Yeah, I mean, he's a these guys have all bought into something that's bigger than themselves. And I also think that's a big credit to, you know, his staff, right? Sure. So, I mean, yeah. Stan Jones and the rest of the crew, like, you've got to have great assistance. Like, there's, there's no question about it. I mean, the, the head coach is there for a reason, but without great assistance, you're not going to have a great program. And you obviously need great players, but – I think, um, you know, his staff does a phenomenal job as well. He's really recruiting at a high level now, too, and they got a monster class coming in next year. So yeah. it doesn't seem Patrick, to be slowing I'm, down. I'm enjoying Patrick Williams on my Bulls this year, too. He's he's looking good as a rookie. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go with the Bulls <laughs> okay. talk. Okay, so a lot of people ask us what uh, – <laughs> what Well, not- I'll tell you what's funny about Patrick Williams. Is Sir, Sir and I were texting on draft day, and – um I, I, he said to me, he goes, who is this guy? I said, that's what I said. This guy got drafted in the top 10 and we didn't even know who he was. Right. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Well, he wasn't starting. That just goes to show you, right? Yeah. 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 I know yeah. he wasn't a starter. Right. Yeah. So yeah. No it would doubt. have been interesting, um, you know, without COVID putting a stop to the season two to see how For far sure. that Florida yeah. state team would have went because around. that was, that was a, a really loaded Florida state team too. All right. A lot of people ask you guys what, know you got to, I mean, that's, you got to get lucky too. Oh, absolutely, hundred uh, percent. Got got to ask what uh, nineteen nine is. So uh, we got a nineteen nine moment here. They're going to explain it here for us. And Sura hits a hits a three for us as well. Pro line is twenty three feet four inches. The college line is nineteen point nine, nineteen feet nine inches. A double, leaving Sura open. There's a three. That was an NBA three. Very close to it, Dick. He has tremendous uh, range. So yeah, we get asked all the time what a what what ninety nine means, and and uh, you as a as a Hoosier, uh, <laughs> a fellow Hoosier. Uh, we're just shooters, man. I know that our, our college team right now does not reflect that. (laughs) That's a a sore point with us, but, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're all shooters down here and, uh, being from the great state of Indiana, that's why we named our company 99 and, uh, yeah, you can shoot the rock. Sir can shoot the rock. We can shoot the rock, but not at a high level. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. Well, Scott, you got anything else that uh, you want to share? Any other stories? I want to open up to you and, and also just thank you for coming on. It, it's yeah, a blast. As soon as you reached out, I was like, this is going to be so much fun. Josh asked, like, I, you know, what do I need to be ready for? I'm like, nothing. Yeah, no, That's I appreciate like, you having me. I want, Scott. And, and just to piggyback on that too, Scott, I want you to come back on. We just want to talk. Like, if you're willing to come yeah. back on, like, let's just take a half hour, 45 minutes and talk Indiana high school basketball. For because sure. Like, uh, as you were mentioning his accolades at the beginning, I'm like, I want to know who was on that Indiana all-star yes, team with him. I exactly. want to know if they beat Kentucky. Right I want to know era. who coached that. I want to know everything about that. So we got to have you back on just to talk a little Indiana high school hoops, too. Yeah, yeah. We'll save, we'll save for another another session. Perfect. <laughs> Would love that. Well, you got anything else that you want to you uh, talk about or, or else I'm going to get us out of here? You know, I, the only other thing I would say is just, um, you know, those friendships that you make playing at that level are, are pretty incredible. And, um, you know, Sam Cassell, he was he was a great team. I mean, we, we didn't talk a lot about Sam, but yeah. um, Sam was one of those guys once he got into the league. My brother was three years younger than me, so he was still in high school when I was in college. And uh, Sam would come on the road and play against the Pacers. And the first thing he'd do is call my brother oh, and be like, dope. hey, you want to come down to the West End? We're That's just going to so hang cool. out, order room service, play video games. Oh my and so my brother got to spend time with, you know, Sam and crew. And he just always did a good job of taking care of, of the people around him. And my brother would come up and play with us in Tallahassee when, when I was a freshman there. And every time he'd get the ball and swing it to him, my brother could shoot it. He would just say, Paxson. <laughs> <laughs> Every love time, and, love uh, Sam. But Sam Dino. was Sam was a great teammate, um, you know. And he, he takes care of my brother and, and 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 me to this day. I mean, my brother was uh, was in town in Oklahoma City, uh, you know, a season ago, and uh, he reached out to Sam. Sam got him tickets. 
I used to see Sam quite a bit when he was with the the Clippers here in in LA. So um, yeah, just great memories, great people, great university, great booster system, support staff, like just a lot to be thankful for. All right, man. Well, I I love it. Love Sam Cassell. And thanks again for coming on uh, today. And uh, shout out to all the FSU fans out there. Go out and get the, get the shorts and hopefully there's fo- not very follow. Many. Yeah. There's not very many know. left. We get like, that shirt. <laughs> follow them to the final four this year. They're going, they're going, they're gonna, I'm going to, I'm going to put them into my bracket. All right, man. I love it. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Josh. Good old. Thank you for listening to the 19.9 podcast. If you haven't already subscribed to the podcast, make sure you do. And while you're at it, leave us a rating or review. It helps keep us going. We also have links to all of 99 social media so you never miss a release. Until next time.